Hey, it's Mike here, and today, Moringa. It sounds a little bit like a Latin dance, but no, it is a plant, and its green powder form has exploded on the market quite recently, like a powder keg. Hey, hey, yo. And the claims around Moringa's benefits are wide-sweeping, and of course, it's marketed heavily, so what does the science say? And thankfully, it has been researched in a ton of areas, from blood sugar, blood pressure, various diseases and conditions, as well as pre-diabetes, exercise, performance and even dropout school. I have a case of dropout school and the only thing that can fix it is more Inga. That's a more cowbell reference. I got a fever <laughs> and the only prescription it's more cowbell. So we're gonna look at over a dozen studies on this and ask what is the nutrient profile? Is it even safe? All of that, let's go. Lightning fast in terms of my own conflicts here. I don't have any, I'm interested in this and I also had a friend just ask me about it. And it's funny, as I was about to film this, I saw that a company I previously worked with just came out with a Moringa powder. That doesn't benefit me, no connection there. And that speaks to its popularity. Anyway, to the basics here, we are talking about Moringa oleifera, which is the main species that is being sold here in the form of powders. It's native to North India, and it's also referred to as the drumstick tree, because it has long pods like this that you could just use to wail out an epic drum solo. And being native to North India, of course it is in Ayurvedic traditional medicine, which I have a bit of a mixed relationship with. I think there's some good lessons to be taken from Ayurveda, but then also, you know, I have a family member that got high cholesterol from a ghee cleanse. We gotta keep the science going here. And well, you can just get it and taste it for yourself. I've seen it described as a mix between matcha and arugula. So, you know, maybe not the most exciting taste in the world, but generally people are eating it as green powder from the leaves directly. Of course, you can also eat the pods and the stems, and there are various products like extracts and oils too. And I feel like I've seen almost everything claimed around Moringa's benefits from being anti-cancer, anti-asthma, to just straight from WebMD, how it, quote, can be used to protect tissue, talking about liver, kidneys, heart, and lungs which is sort of a wide open statement. Like protect tissues, how? I just spread it on my body and it acts as armor. <laughs> like, I'm just joking. We'll get to the diseases in a second, but there are also a lot of nutritional claims. So let's look at nutrition from this study. They say, quote, in fact, Moringa is said to provide, yes, this is peer reviewed, said to provide seven times more vitamin C than oranges, 10 times more vitamin A than carrots, 17 times more calcium than milk, nine times more protein than yogurt, blah, 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 and on and on. And I would say the slight issue with these comparisons is that the amount that you can eat of Moringa is really not that much. We'll talk about safety and limits in a little bit here, but when comparing it to an orange, for example, and that vitamin C, does it really have wildly more vitamin C? Well, if we're looking at actual servings to chronometer.com, you know I love it. 10 grams of Moringa powder, well, three to five is the suggested serving from some companies, has 22.5 milligrams of vitamin C, well, just a medium-sized orange has about 70. Say you're eating half an orange, that's 35 milligrams. So yeah, not really a better practical source than oranges of vitamin C. So vitamin C later, Moringa, nope, it's still quite a decent source. Oranges are just great. And just looking at the other nutrients, 10 grams of Moringa does get you to 63% of your vitamin A retinol equivalent requirement and about 30% of your calcium requirement, also nearly 50% of iron, so quite solid here. And do we have any studies of nutrient status in humans? Well, we have a bit from this randomized control trial on postmenopausal women. They took seven grams of Moringa for three months and they saw a 9% increase in their retinol levels, which is true vitamin A in the body. And then in terms of vitamin C, they saw a 44% increase in blood levels. And that study also looked at some antioxidants, which brings me to antioxidants here. The main one appears to be quercetin, which I've talked about before, which has several benefits. It is quite a good source here at 100 milligrams of quercetin per 100 grams. Rams. It's still only about a third of what the quercetin king capers has, which are also hard to eat a lot of because they're usually soaked in salty brine and small. That combined with other antioxidants in it is why back to that study on women, we saw an 18% increase in glutathione peroxidase, which is essentially saying that it freed up some of our body's own natural antioxidants and also led to a decrease in markers of oxidative stress by 16%. And it outperformed amaranth that was given as a sort of control in 
every category I've mentioned so far. And I will say I stumbled upon some papers talking about how good the amino acid profile is and how high protein these moringa leaves are and the rest of the plant is. And well, I have to say, uh, yeah, it has a pretty good amino acid profile. If people are only having like five to 10 grams, they're only gonna be getting like two and a half grams of protein from it. So I wouldn't consider it like a major protein source, but you know, better than other leaves are gonna be eaten. But now let's move on to disease markers and disease treatment. And first we have cholesterol, which is obviously super important because it contributes to our main leading killer. And while I've seen claims like from Healthline saying that there are human and animal studies where it lowers cholesterol, they just linked four animal studies there as far as I can tell. But I did find a study, which was this one on people who already had high cholesterol, seeing not just a lowering in cholesterol, but also a lowering in BMI, which is like, what the heck is going on here? <laughs> now the lowering wasn't massive, especially compared to some other sort of plant-based medicine out there like Amla. And I can't say it's the best uh, journal out out there, but one way that this could be happening, especially in terms of weight loss, could be blood sugar control. Back to this study on postmenopausal women, we did see that there was a lowering in fasting blood glucose, which is cool. And then we have this small study on 21 people with diabetes. However, only six of them were given moringa, the rest were given other plants like bitter melon and curry leaves. And as you can see, the moringa did outperform the after meal glucose rise compared to the other plants, leading the research researchers to make this the last sentence of the study, quote, as the drumstick leaves reduce postprandial hyperglycemia significantly, the vegetable may be considered as acceptable for diabetic patients. And there's a couple pre-diabetes randomized control trials, and well, they didn't seem to find something across the board in this study, if they tracked the tumor necrosis factor A, an inflammation marker, along with hemoglobin A1C, it sort of exposed some responders that it was helping with, but it didn't seem to be helping everybody. Hemoglobin A1C is that long-term marker of blood sugar control, very important in terms of having diabetes or not. And they say that the connection between TNF alpha and hemoglobin A1C was 77% accurate. Interesting. However, to this other trial on pre-diabetes, they found significant differences between groups in the rate of change of fasting blood glucose and hemoglobin A1C, which showed opposite directions during the intervention, decreasing with the Moringa and increasing with placebo, going as far as to say that Moringa might be an anti-hyperglycemic agent. I am an agent of the Anti-Hyperglycemia League. Allow me to enter your body and investigate. You know, good things keep on coming. We're also seeing good results with blood pressure from this randomized control trial. Found that Moringa lowered blood pressure after a meal and over 24 days despite high sodium intake, as they say, but it was really just the US average. Anyway, the results keep on coming. We can move to exercise performance. We have this randomized control trial of 40 plus people, split them into two groups. One group took Moringa, and after 30 days, looking at the results of push-ups and treadmill tests, the Moringa group exhibited, quote, enhanced performance in push-ups and treadmill exhaustion tests compared to the placebo group, and also, again, levels of glucose, as well as these antioxidant markers like that glutathione peroxidase activity also improved in the Moringa group. I personally think their fitness improved because they were doing the Moringa dance. Do the Moringa dance, do the Moringa dance, and please don't unsubscribe. And sometimes in the athletic performance area, I get a little bit worried about conflicts of interest, but they say there were no conflicts of interest in this one. And I've seen several claims of it being anti-cancer, Sort of true. Well, from this 2024 review of studies, it did suppress various cancers, but all in a Petri dish. We have nothing on humans yet, so keep that in mind. All right, now let's get to some more rare diseases and more obscure effects. And the first one that interests me is the potential heavy metal resistance that this could help with. I say could because this is just in rodent studies in particular. We have a couple on arsenic, and this one found that Moringa mitigated the negative oxidative effects of arsenic exposure. So, you know, it sucks that they were giving these little rodents some arsenic, but perhaps in the future, there are some studies that can be done on humans who are already exposed to arsenic and we can get an answer on this really. And we also have a couple interesting studies in the realm of HIV, which I was not expecting, but they've done some tests here. And to the first study, after six months, patients in the Moringa group exhibit a significant increase in BMI, which you wanna keep up with HIV as well as albumin 
regulation or free blood protein levels compared to control. So for whatever reason, we're seeing a more normalization of BMI with Moringa, at least from that study. What could be a mechanism? Could there be some immunological effect going on here? Well, to the next study, this one looked at Moringa and its effect on the immune system. And one finding was around CD4 and CD4 is a type of T cell that we see lowered in people with more severe HIV. You know, this signals a weaker immune system. It's an important marker. They saw a significant difference in CD4 counts by treatment group, and that CD4 counts among the Moringa group were 10.33 fold greater than the control group over the study period. So that's quite impressive, and I feel like speaks a little bit to just consuming plants for immune-related diseases. I mean, if we're seeing that effect, it makes me wonder you know, what a whole plant-based diet would do. Somebody start that study. And just in the realm of immune response, this is one that is just wildly far from <laughs> any conclusion on humans. But I stumbled across the study, and that is one on chickens that had a bacterial infection and were given Moringa. And the sort of fecal uh, <laughs> bacterial expulsion level went down by like 90 plus percent, depending on the dose. And between the HIV results and these animal results, I'm wondering, how would Moringa affect things like the common cold? Somebody do that research. Anyway, another one is asthma. We have an asthma study here on about 20 people. They were given three grams of what was described as finely ground Moringa powder. They all just inhaled it and started coughing. I don't know what these scientists were thinking. I'm joking. Anyway, they took that for three weeks and in the end they did three different measurements of their ability to exhale air and they all improved. They also improved in shortness of breath, wheezing, chest tightness, and cough, but no control group, so this needs to be repeated. For another obscure one, we have oral leukoplakia, which is essentially these white patches which can be associated with cancer. In this case, they used a 2% Moringa mucoadhesive gel, which I guess the idea is that adheres to your mucous membranes or the lining that's in your mouth. They say, quote, it demonstrated a significant reduction in lesion size compared to Retino-A cream, which is a classic treatment after three months of therapy without any adverse effects. And on that note, let's get to the safety here. And we can look to this study, which claims, yeah, as long as you keep it under 1000 milligrams or one gram per kilogram of body weight, uh, you'll be fine, but you don't want to get up to uh, three grams because that's bad. What does any of this mean? Well, if somebody weighs 150 pounds or like 68 kilograms, you don't want to be eating more than 68 grams at a time. And 200 grams would have a negative effect. So like if you're taking one of these scoops that's more than your average scoop, like 10, a lot of them again are three or five, you don't wanna be having like seven scoops at once. <laughs> Which I'm gonna go ahead and say, with all the hype around it, somebody is probably doing right now. They're probably just scooping down scoop after scoop, and that's the scoop on risk level. <laughs> and then there's one last point here, just completely zooming out of why at the end of this, I'm like, hey, Moringa, a pretty good idea, even beyond nutrition. And that just has to do with how it is a drought resistant plant that doesn't seem to require a lot of water. It grows in quite a few places quite easily. Even if it's in a non-native territory, it doesn't seem to have invasive species potential. It isn't like spreading around like crazy like kudzu, which is that Japanese vine that's like taken over the Southern US. It also has flowers that bloom for a really long time, which is great for native pollinators. Again, drought resistant. Uh, it's a win-win-win there for me. So in the end, I do wanna emphasize that, well, it seemed like there were a lot of studies that I covered, there still really is not a massive amount of research around this. I mean, we don't even have a Moringa cholesterol trial in a well-known journal yet, which would just be really interesting to see and quite basic. But the results that have at least been published so far are showing that this is either beneficial or not harmful in so many situations. Could be beneficial in terms of exercise performance, you know, in terms of T cell levels in people with HIV, it could be helping with blood sugar, blood pressure, and so on. And if you're just a normal person wondering if this is something that would help boost your health, it seems like it's a quite good source of antioxidants and various nutrients. And because of that, it might be better than some other green powders out there, or at least just has a different profile. So yeah, well, I started out this investigation a little bit skeptical with all the claims out there. Uh, I'm seeing you know, generally good things. If anything, there's a little bit too much hype around certain areas, 
but it still looks to be beneficial. And for a little bit of housekeeping, there are still some Costa Rica spots open, especially in February. So you can click the link below if you wanna have an amazing Costa Rica trip. And then also you may have noticed uh, this video, it wasn't sponsored by Seed or anybody. And I will just say, if you've been in any Target, you might realize that Seed is now in all Targets, so uh, they don't need me anymore. And due to a high level of complaints, I also discontinued my Fume Herbal Air sponsor relationship. I might do a video on that later because I still support a lot about it. And so, yeah, feel free to check my Patreon out. I would love if you would support me, uh, link below. And of course, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.